The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Welcome to worship as part of St. Philip's Lutheran Church in Hastings, Minnesota. I am Pastor Greg Geyer bringing you greetings on behalf of our community of faith. And I am very grateful for all of the folks that are making this possible. Greg McKenzie is doing our video editing for this week's service. My colleague and brother in Christ, John Disher, is in charge of slides and sound. Our organist, Noreen Swanson, is providing music. And my brother in Christ, Raul Jackson, is reading as a lector and also bringing uh, his voice to help enrich our worship. And we are also especially blessed that my friend, colleague, and sister in Christ, Pastor Rebecca Thurman, has driven all the way down for this service to preach because she will be coming actually on the day that you see this on the 30th. She will be preaching in person here, and she made it possible for us to have this worship service so that I wouldn't have to write an extra sermon. So I'm very, very grateful <laughs> for her dedication and her compassion, and we are in for a blessing and a treat all the way around. Please note this is the first Sunday where we are going back to what is called the Revised Common Lectionary, which is the three-year cycle, where for the last several years we have been using the Narrative Lectionary, which was a four-year cycle. And so now we are going to be having more than one uh, lesson each week, and we are going to make sure that there is also a Gospel lesson incorporated into our worship service each week. Whereas with the Narrative Lectionary, we started in Genesis and we worked our way all the way through Revelation over the course of nine months. Also, please note that on this day, on May 30th, there will not be a Zoom Holy Communion service at 11 a.m. Let us take a moment now to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. On this Trinity Sunday, we worship God as we live our lives, remembering our baptisms in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe, Ascribe to, to the, the Lord, Lord glory and strength. strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship, worship the, the Lord in, in holy splendor. splendor. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The, the voice, voice of the Lord, Lord is full of majesty. majesty. May the Lord give strength to his people. May, May the, the Lord bless his people with peace. Let us join our voices in song and praise as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Trinity, one God, 
full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our song of praise and prayer. Holy God, we praise your name. Verses 1 and 4. Majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity. And bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues with our readings from Scripture. The first reading for today is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, we put to death the deeds of the body we will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. 
When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and the joined heirs with Christ. In fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The gospel is taken from John chapter 3, 1 through 21. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do things, the signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, well, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it chooses. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit, Nicodemus said to him. Well, how can these things be? Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned. And those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that the deeds may not be exposed those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Hi, I'm Pastor Rebecca, and this is my time to get to talk to the young people. And it is so much fun to be here again. And I look forward to talking about the third chapter of John. This is Trinity Sunday, the day that we lift up God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I'd like to talk to you about the gifts and the love that this relational God, one God, three in one, one in three, has brought to us. But instead of stepping into that, what I'd like you to do is get some paper and a pencil. And as I am talking about the third chapter of John, I'd like you to draw things that you remember and evidences of God's love in your life. And as you go get some paper, I'll tell you a story, and so you can see 
how this might be useful if you get a bunch of paper together and perhaps type them when you're all done so you can see the grace and the gift of God. Years ago, as I was serving in a small country church, I was speaking from John, and I had the children roll out a large roll of butcher paper, and we had plenty of crayons and pencils, and I asked them to write or see picture what they saw as the evidence of God's love in their lives. Now, this was a very big roll of paper, and as they kept writing and I kept talking, they kept pushing it down the aisle. Well, as they were doing the butterflies and the rainbows and the rain and the food they had last night, no one noticed that the aisle was actually tilted a little bit down. And because it was summer and hot, the ushers had opened up the back door. And as the children drew on all of the paper, the roll started to roll. And as they watched, fascinated, I was talking, but we were watching the paper, it rolled down the steps, down the street, across into the fields, and out of our sight. For the love of God is strong and great. So as I talk to you about the third chapter of John, please pick up differences, evidence in your life, things for which you would like to thank God, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit who walks with us every day. Thanks be to God, and when you're done, I hope that you will tape those pieces of paper together so that you and your family can enjoy and ask the folks around you to draw their thankfulness to God on paper that you can stretch out and enjoy God's great love. Let us pray. God, I thank you so much for each and every one of these young ones and all the rest of us too, and for the love that you shine among us. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we bless you this day and we thank you this day, and we ask in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Well, today, as I spoke about with the children, is Holy Trinity Sunday. And this is a day we celebrate the love of God, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Trinity Sunday follows right after Pentecost and the giving of the Holy Spirit. And today, the gospel comes from the third chapter of St. John, in which God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit are lifted up and we see what was, what is, and what is yet to come. And as we look at our world today, we truly need the triune God in our lives. And never has that need been greater. For as COVID is lessening its grip on the United States, it's devastating other countries in our world. And it's not just COVID, you know, that has brought so much suffering. There are bombs dropping in the Bible lands, Israel and Palestine. There's gun violence and poverty in our streets. There are individuals who are suffering. And as we look around our world, we're on the eve of Memorial Day. And we remember those who gave their lives for our country. And we remember the one who gave his life for all countries. And that all who turn to him may live free. For too often, in these days, we focus on our despair. But on this day, I ask you to step into the story of the Gospel of John that Raul, Raul read so beautifully for us. Thank you. For here, as we step into the story, we see that everything is a little bit intermixed. We have past and future and present turned together. It's a wonderful story. But there's another thing that's a little confusing, and that's the word anothen. It's confusing because it has two specific meanings, anu and from above. So as Jesus uses it, are we born anu or are we born from above? Nicodemus is going to get it confused, but Jesus is going to explain. And as we step into the story, I want you to come in with me. Come in. Join the story. Look over there. It's mostly dark. But if you look closely, you'll see a cloaked one going in between the shadows, and there's a little bit of light. You can just see. 
And as we look, we hear the sound of soldiers, soldiers coming, and the cloaked one stays in the shadows. But as the soldiers go away, the cloaked one sees one who is sitting, and an odd light shines around him. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs apart that you do apart from the presence of God. Signs? I don't remember anything about signs. We've come in on scene three. Where, where, where are the signs? And one says to me, the first sign, Jesus turned the water into wine. And you remember when Jesus went into the temple and he overturned the tables because the sellers were forbidding everybody to worship God? And he said, the sign of the Son of Man will be, the temple will be destroyed in three days. And they thought they meant the great golden temple. But we know it was the temple of his body. But as the scene continues, something else is going on on stage. The light is getting stronger now. As a seated one says to the cloaked one, Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born Anothan. Anothan? That word again? Born anew or born from above? The cloaked one, that's Nicodemus, he gets it wrong. Asking how can one be born anew after growing old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Obviously not. Jesus clarified. Whatever is born of fl the flesh is flesh. And whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Don't be astonished that I said to you, you must be born Anothen. That's from above. Anyone who has been baptized has been born Anathan, for to be baptized is to be born of the Spirit, to be born from above. To be baptized is to be washed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and blessed in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But Nicodemus doesn't get it. So he asks, how can these things be? Startled, Jesus responds, Are you a teacher of Israel? and yet you do not understand these things? And then something starts to happen. We're standing up, and we're going down to the stage, and we go up onto the stage, and we stand right behind Nicodemus so that we can better hear and better understand. Now we can hear Jesus say, Truly, truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. Testimony? As I consider, Jesus turns to Nicodemus. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? Fair, fair enough, but wait. The stage is starting to turn. Slowly it fast and, and then, then faster. Things are changing. Instead of the solid stage, we're sitting in sands, desert sands, and someone points to a rock and says, that's Beth El, Beth House, El God, House of God. But there's no house there. And the central figures we came up to see are gone. And the winds are starting to blow, and still the stage is continuing to turn. We can hardly see each other. Folks are trying to find shelter, but the winds are blowing harder and faster, and in the distance a voice. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And the winds slow down, but the sand is everywhere. It's in our faces. It's in the few trees, it's in our mouths, it's everywhere. And the people are complaining. And in the sand, you can see snakes, and they're biting the people, and the people are crying out. And an old man lifts a brown stake on the pole, and he says, look up, 
For salvation comes from above. Look up, and from above we hear. For just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And it's too much. We cannot understand. And having looked up, now we fall forward on our faces because the stage is starting to move again and it's moving until the sand is gone and there's something solid underneath now and the sand is gone, but there's something in the air that you can taste and it's making it hard to see and it's about noontime, but it's dark and we can hardly see And as we strain to look, we can hear the soldiers again, soldiers, and in the distance we see three crosses. And then a voice cries, It is finished. Oh God, what is this place, this day? And the soldier stabs him and walks away, afraid to move. We see two men come in from stage right. Nicodemus is in the lead, and the other one with him is Joseph of Arimathea. They've come from Pilate. They ask for his body, and slowly they come to the the cross, And carefully and slowly, they lift his body down. And gently, slowly, they cradle him in their arms. And they leave. And it's entirely dark. And slowly, the stage turns just until we see a cave a tomb. Peter and John are running away, but Mary is standing outside the tomb. And Jesus comes up to her and asks why she is weeping. And I want to go up to her and explain, and I want to go up and see and touch him, and all of a sudden, the stage is turning again. And it's going faster and faster and centuries are falling away and we're in our seats again. And the light is shining stronger and steady now. And from above, we hear again the living words. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world And the people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come into the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. For God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Amen. Amen. Let us join our voices as we sing, Come Join the Dance of Trinity. Come join the dance of Trinity Before all worlds be gone There'll interweaving of the three The Father, Spirit, Son The universe of space and time But as the three in love and hope gave room within their dance, 
Come and see the face of Trinity, newborn in Bethlehem. Then bloodied by a crown of thorns outside Jerusalem. The dance of Trinity is meant from human flesh and bone. When fear confines the dance of death, God rules away the stone. Come speak aloud of Trinity as wind and tongues of flame. Set people free and Pentecost to tell the Savior's name. We know the yoke of sin and death, our hands have worn it smooth. Go tell the world of weight and woe that we are free to move. Within the dance of Trinity, before all worlds be gone, we sing the praises of the three, the Father, Spirit, Son. Let voices rise and interweave by love and hope set free to shape in song its joy of life, the dance of We are made God's people through our baptism into Jesus Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all according to their need. To the prompt, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for Israel and Palestine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all those who suffer especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Mm -hmm. Give respite to those living with PTSD, anxiety, or other mental health concerns. We pray, O oh Lord, for those battling COVID-19, cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and other chronic or terminal diseases. And those we lift up before you with our lips or in our hearts. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for this worshiping community, St. Philip's Lutheran Church, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. And we also remember those who have served in our armed forces for the sake of peace in our world and those who lost their lives due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and also with you. you. And if you are worshiping with someone as you worship with us, we invite you to share the peace of Christ with them. And if you are by yourself as you are worshiping with us, we pray that you may feel Christ's presence with you and know that you are a loved and cherished child of God. Peace be with my family. God's peace. Peace. We continue to thank and praise God with our tithes and our offerings. To the many of you who have remained steadfast and faithful in supporting Christ's work in, through, and beyond St. Philip's Lutheran Church, we thank you for that witness. And if you are supporting the work of Christ through another ministry, we thank you for that faithfulness as well. pray together. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now we are going to be learning a new song and we are going to ask Noreen to play it through once, and then we will join our voices as we sing. Voices raised to you, and as we join our voices in prayer. <laughs> Gifts you lead us, we return to 
as children born from above. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you.